Hi, this is Steve, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate an opt in form with your affiliate network. For this video, I'm going to assume that you've watched both the video on integrating a tracking link with an affiliate network and integrating a landing page with an affiliate network. The first video showed you how to pass a click ID from your tracking link to your affiliate network. It also showed you how to set up a post back URL with your affiliate network so you could track sales conversions in your ClickMagic stats. The second video on landing page integration showed you how you would pass a click ID from your tracking link through a landing page using some ClickMagic JavaScript code and then onto your affiliate network. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pass the click ID from your tracking link through an opt in page and then onto your affiliate network. Now, explaining how to set this up is quite easy. Actually, doing it is a bit trickier. This is tricky because every autoresponder implements this differently and every page builder works differently with every autoresponder so it can get a bit crazy. So what I'm going to do is show you what the end result of the setup is supposed to look like. Then I'll give you suggestions that can help you figure out exactly what to do with your unique page builder and autoresponder combination. So let's take a closer look at the opt-in page and autoresponder. Let's look at this link by link. First, we have the link that points to the opt-in page. This link will contain the click ID and the S1 variable of its query string. Now, if you don't understand why this is true, then I suggest that you go back and watch those first two videos, which fully explain what the click ID is and how it's passed through your funnel in the S1 variable of query string. Now, the opt in page is like any other page in your funnel, so to pass the click ID through it, you need to install the ClickMagic JavaScript code that we talked about in detail in the video on setting up landing pages with your affiliate network. I'm going to jump to the final link here. This is the link coming from your autoresponder. This link is typically called the thank you page link or the thank you page URL and must pass the click ID as part of it. We're going to talk more about this in a minute, but what I want to emphasize right here is that you need to know whether this link points to another page you've created in your funnel or if it points to an entry page of the affiliate network. If this link points to another page you've created, the click ID needs to be passed in the S1 variable so that the ClickMagic JavaScript code in the next page will work. If the link points to the entry page of the affiliate network as it does here, the click ID needs to use the variable name that the network is expecting. Again, this is covered in the landing page video in quite a bit of detail, but I need to repeat it here because it can affect how you set up your opt in page and autoresponder. So, right now, ask yourself, what is this link going to point to? If it's going to point directly to an entry page in your affiliate network, such as the offer page, you need to look up the variable name that the network is expecting. Just go to the Help menu, click Tracking Guide, scroll down to the Post Back URL section, click it, and scroll down to the list of affiliate networks. Find your network here, then move to the right to find the variable name you need to use. Some of the networks use the S1 variable, but most don't. If your thank you page points directly at the affiliate network, you'll need to use this variable name when you pass the click ID, so write it down. In the example we've been using, the autoresponder points to the Max Bounty affiliate network, so I would look at this table and note that Max Bounty wants the click ID in the S2 variable. Now let's go back to the diagram. We now have the three key pieces of information you need to integrate ClickMagic with your autoresponder and affiliate network. Let's go over each of the three pieces. First, we know that the link to the opt-in page has the click ID in the S1 variable of its query string. Second, we know that the ClickMagic JavaScript code will replace the bracket S1 bracket token anywhere it finds it in the HTML code of the opt-in page. And third, we know that the thank you page URL from the autoresponder needs to go to max bounty in this example with the click ID in the S2 variable that it's expecting. If your network needs AFF underscore sub or some other variable name, you would change it here. Our goal is simple. How do we get this S1 value here to the URL for the thank you page here? That's all we're trying to do. Now comes the exciting part, figuring out exactly how to get your autoresponder to do that. Every autoresponder handles this differently, but I'm going to give you some hard earned pointers to get you started. And I'll show you a couple of examples using the popular AWeber and GetResponse autoresponders. Normally, when you're creating an opt-in page, you'll first create the email opt-in form in your autoresponder, then copy the form from there and paste it into your page builder. 
Most autoresponders give you the choice of copying either a piece of JavaScript code or a piece of HTML code. To pass the click ID through your opt-in page in autoresponder, you're almost certainly going to need to use the HTML version, so I'm going to suggest that you start there. What we're hoping to find when we look at the HTML code is that the thank you page URL is embedded in the form. If so, all we need to do is add the click ID variable to its query string and we're done. If I just went over your head, don't worry, I'm going to show you two examples to make this a lot clearer. First, let's copy the thank you page URL because we'll be needing that. Next, let's create a form with the AWeber autoresponder. I've got AWeber open in a link up here. I'm just going to really quickly create a form here. First, let's click on the Sign Up Forms tab. Next, click on Create a Sign Up Form. We'll go ahead and use this default form since this is just an example. So let's go ahead and click on Step 2. Let's answer the questions. For the form name, let's enter Antarctic Snow Water. For the thank you page, let's choose custom page, use your own URL. Now it's asking for the thank you page URL. We've got that on the clipboard, so let's go ahead and paste it in. Now let's save the form. And now that it's saved, let's go to step three. Next, choose I will install my own form so we can get the code for the form. Now we're given both the JavaScript and the HTML versions of the form. Let's take a quick look at the JavaScript code to see if the thank you page URL is anywhere in there. I don't see it, so let's go ahead and try the HTML code. Okay, now we're seeing lots of CSS styling. This is pretty normal, and you can usually turn it off. In AWeber, you just need to uncheck this box here where it says uncheck to get unformatted basic form. Now let's look at the HTML code. And we see our thank you page right here in a hidden input element. Cool. We're going to paste this HTML code right into our opt-in page, so all we need to do is make sure that the URL has the correct query string variable for the page it points to. It should be S1 for all pages except when pointing directly to the entry page of an affiliate network. Then you should use the variable name that the affiliate network is expecting. Max Bounty is expecting S2, so that's what we see here. With that change, all you need to do is paste this HTML code into your page builder, test it, and you're done. Of course, you'll need to paste the ClickMagic JavaScript code into that page as well so it can update the bracket S1 token. So that's how you would do it with AWeber. Now let's see how you would do it with GetResponse. I've already got that open in a tab too. Let's start by clicking on the Create Form button here. And here we have some choices. The List Builder wizard is automatically selected, so let's try that first to see if we can come up with a solution there. Right now, we don't care what the form looks like. We're just trying to see if we can easily edit the Thank You page URL in the form after it's saved. So let's just choose the blank form here. Next, let's look for the settings to see if we can specify the Thank You page URL. There's a gear icon right up here, which generally means settings, so let's try that. And here you can see, choose Thank You page. Let's see what the options are. And let's choose Custom. That gives us a box for the URL. Our thank you page URL is still on the clipboard, so let's paste it in and check it. Now let's save. And finally, we save and publish. And just as with AWeber, we will install our own form. The first thing to notice is that we only have the choice to use JavaScript and not HTML, so let's look at the JavaScript code to see if we can spot the thank you page URL anywhere. It looks like one line of code and the thank you page URL is nowhere to be seen, so unfortunately we can't use this. So let's go back up to forms and try one of the other form creators. Okay, list builder apps doesn't sound right, so let's try plain HTML. Okay, so you can see the basic HTML right here. Let's look at the settings to see if there's one for the thank you page. And here we have custom thank you page URL. Let's check that. And let's go ahead and paste in our URL. And now you can see in the HTML that there's an entry for the thank you page right here. So that's how you would do it in GetResponse. All you need to do is click on the copy code button and paste it into your page builder. 
Now to put all these pieces together, I'm going to show you how you would install the HTML code into the InstaBuilder page builder. What you'll need to do is almost certainly going to be different, but I want you to see the steps involved. I've got the InstaBuilder editor open in yet another tab, so let's copy the HTML code and then I'll install it in the opt-in page. Here's my opt-in page in the InstaBuilder editor. So I'm just going to click on the form here, select its settings right here, choose opt-in form HTML code, and then paste in the HTML code we just created, and now I'm going to click process. Again, this will be completely different for you, but the step will be the same. So now that I've got the HTML installed, I need to make sure that the ClickMagic JavaScript code is on the page. So let's go ahead and get that code. Let's go back to ClickMagic. Let's go to the FAQs. Let's search for JavaScript. Now let's click on Can I pass data to my affiliate links or autoresponder? Let's scroll down to step one. And now let's copy the JavaScript code. And let's go back to InstaBuilder. Let's choose the page settings. Remember, I went over all of this in the landing page video. Let's choose scripts and codes. And we'll paste the JavaScript code in the footer section. Now let's click Save. And that's it. We're done. So let's go back and take a look at the diagram. To review what we've set up, the click ID is going to be passed to the opt-in page in the S1 query string variable. The JavaScript code is going to replace the bracket S1 bracket token with the click ID in the thank you page URL. Then after the visitor enters his or her email address, the autoresponder will collect that information, then pass control to the thank you page URL, which includes the click ID. The only snag you may run into is that your autoresponder won't easily let you edit the thank you page URL. We saw that with the list builder wizard in the get response autoresponder. There we had to use one of its alternative form editors to make it work. Now if your autoresponder doesn't allow you to directly edit the thank you page URL, then you'll have to use another approach. Read through the FAQ that I've pointed out many times in this series of videos. We're constantly updating that document with different strategies that might help with your particular setup. If you still find yourself stuck, every autoresponder should have complete documentation on how to pass data through their forms to a thank you page. Read their FAQs and if you have any questions, just contact their support desk and they'll be able to walk you through exactly how their system works. Remember, they're the experts on their system, not us. Finally, your autoresponder will obviously keep track of how many people subscribe to your list, but if you also want ClickMagic to track how many people enter their email address, then you'll need to include a tracking pixel in the thank you page. Now, if you can't insert a tracking pixel into the thank you page, perhaps because it's an entry page to an affiliate network as it is here, then you'll need to add a special pixel code tracking link to your setup. This is a tracking link that contains the tracking pixel that will record the subscriber in ClickMagic. We have a video that will show you how to set up a pixel code tracking link. Just remember, if you do decide to use a pixel code tracking link, the tracking link will need to pass the click ID to the affiliate network using the variable name that the affiliate network is expecting. I point this out because it's a common oversight. So that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions about setting up your autoresponder, contact the support desk for that company. And of course, if you have any questions about ClickMagic, just contact us at our support desk. This is Steve with ClickMagic. I'll see you on the next video.